Hello everyone, my name is Ken G, and this is my final project for CSE 424. I'll be trying to predict wins based on NBA season long statistics. So the key questions here are, can I predict wins based on the stats at hand? Are there different metrics that are more important than others in evaluating wins? And how are all the metrics, the variables that we have chosen, related? In basketball in particular, a lot of the statistics that you evaluate are highly correlated. Wins or points are related to the number of shots you take, the number of two-point shots, three-point shots, etc. So I'm expecting a lot of correlation between the different uh, data points. I've chosen this data set from Kaggle. I joined two of their basketball data sets one with the season-long aggregation data and one with draft pick data because I thought that would add an interesting element. There are 507 samples after I've cleaned the data set uh, from about 1990 to 2013 for the seasons. There are 28 variables with 24 being continuous, two binary, and two categorical. I've also taken 80% of the samples and put them in a training set, and I took the other 20% and put them in a test set to evaluate my model after I'm finished here. For the analysis component, I will be doing an exploratory PCA to understand, again, how these variables are interrelated to each other, and we'll see if we can tease out some relationships that we haven't seen before. I'll also be building a regression model I'm going to try a stepwise as well as a handpick model based on what I think is valuable. And I'll, uh, I went through the whole process of taking out variables that were um, highly correlated as well. Finally, I'm going to compare the results of the regression models to a gradient boosted random forest. In past research related to this area, not many people really focus on season long wins. They're, they're focused on if a team will win the game for that night. And at the resources that I've chosen that are, are sourced in the appendix, they've been able to predict uh, individual win with about a 67% accuracy, which is pretty good. But they're looking at if a team will win a categorical analysis, a classification algorithm, instead of a regression like what I am planning to use. A lot of non-academic use, like on Bleacher Report, they put out projections of how many teams, uh, how many wins they think a team will have. However, they, they hide the methodology that they use. So hopefully this will shed some light on a possible way to predict wins and losses here. Looking a bit further into the data, as I'd mentioned before, a lot of the variables are highly correlated. You can see in this green circle that there are, you know, most of the shooting, so field goal, field goal attempts are, are points attempted, points scored, and the two-point percentage are highly correlated. Also, three-point shooting and two-point shooting are really negatively correlated, which is interesting. I've also built a couple data points because percentages are very commonly used in basketball, so I've taken the two-point shots made divided by the two-point shots attempted to make a two-point percentage. I did the same thing with three-point percentage and free throw. I also removed a couple features from the analysis because they didn't necessarily make sense to use to predict wins. So if they made the playoffs in the current year, that comes after they've won their games. So in terms of uh, a time frame, that doesn't make sense to use as a predictor. Year is also an interesting one because basketball works in eras. And so time chunks may be more telling than the actual individual year that they played something in. So moving forward to the principal component analysis, we have, uh, based on the screen plot to the right, we've identified seven principal components that explain about 83% of the variance in the data. As you look at the loadings, there aren't really too many surprising things. Um, there's a, a component that's related to, to shooting, one related to scoring, one related to defense. But the two that I thought were really interesting were discipline and what I've deemed bigness. And that's and for, for time, I'll, I'll talk a little about bigness. 
So as you can see in this loading, there's defensive rebound and blocking. Those are both associated with large players who can get up and, and get the ball first off of the rim. That's negatively correlated well with steals. So a, a, a team that ranks highly in this component would uh, anecdotally be larger and less fast to be able to get up the court and transition and create a steal. That's something, I, you know, I can't make any, any definitive sense of that now, but that's something that warrants further research and would be something interesting to study. Going on to my regression models, uh, I, again, I built a stepwise and I handpicked a model. So the stepwise, it had really high, uh, high R-square value. Almost 95% of the variance in the model is explained, uh, in the data is explained by the model. However, it's pretty obvious. So opponent points against points for assists and turnovers doesn't really tell us much about the actual components that contribute to wins. So if I was a basketball coach and owner of an organization, I would be more concerned with what smaller factors drive wins rather than the big obvious ones. Additionally, if I was evaluating how a new player would come into my organization and impact wins, I'd be looking more at if they increase our team's three-point percentage or if they add to blocks or rebounds. That's not something that can necessarily be easily teased out of points. So I handpicked this model, and these were the significant variables after I removed points, uh, because points has a bunch of these other factors rolled up into it. It still has a relatively high R-square of uh, 8.9, I mean 0.89, and I think that that's pretty good. I also thought this model might generalize slightly better because it was a um, it was made up of the different components. However, on the next slide, you'll see that I was wrong. <laughs> so, using the test data set that I had um, blocked off, I evaluated how the stepwise model, the manual picked, well, my hand picked model, and a just decision tree regression would perform on the on the test set. So it looks like the stepwise model still generalized better than either of the other ones. I'm a bit surprised about the the well I guess it's a random forest model uh, performing so poorly. I thought that you know I didn't get to tune it and I had to uh, train it on a slightly smaller data set for it to be applicable. But Again, it's interesting to see that the RMSE here, the root mean square, is the lowest for the stepwise regression. Going forward, I think it'd be interesting to evaluate my the same model using the principal components as independent variables. I'd also like to look at, take a stab at predicting if a team would win individual games. Um, just for reference, these are the APA formatted articles that I use to understand the research. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening and have a great day. Bye now.